Hi, I'm Evan Butler, and you may remember me from my first prediction video, Brock Lesnar vs. Alistair Overeem, but judging by the views, I'm sure no one does. So let's start this one off better with MMA analyst, casino MMA, good friend of mine, and Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu blue belt, Nick cuddles Koch. How are you, Nick? I'm doing good. How are we all doing tonight? We're doing good. We're going to do way better this time. Let's get right to it. What's the first uh, match? Start out tonight's card in the UFC lightweight division with a very talent-packed fight. We have Terry Edom, who is an English-based striker, had a lot of very good wins in UFC, a couple of disparaging losses, against the undefeated Florida-based fighter Edson Barboza. All right, well, I like Terry Edom. He's, he's scrappy. He's English. I'm biased towards the English fighters. Uh, but Edson Barbosa, he is he's named after a ship captain from Pirates of the Caribbean. He is an undefeated Brazilian man in Brazil. Let's uh let's go Edson Barbosa, second round submission. Alrighty, not a bad pick by Evan. I'm gonna have to agree with him and say Barbosa is also gonna take it in this one, probably by submission, and if not by submission, by a pretty clean unanimous decision. Edom has not shown well-rounded skills in the past. He's a little bit more towards a striker. He does have a couple of submission wins, mostly by guillotine, though, which, as you all know, is not a very technical move. It's just a front choke, really. Edom is going to get taken down and just honestly hurt put on him for three rounds. So let's say Barboza, three-round decision. All right, that was our first pick. Both of us have Barboza. He's got a decision for Barboza. I got second-round submission. I'm, I'm enjoying this already. Let's get on to the next fight. What do we got? Alrighty, second fight, we move up in weight to the UFC welterweight division as WEC veteran Carlo Prater looks to return to the Zufo ranks and we have Eric Silva, a Noguera-based fighter. This welterweight contest is going to be a very fun one if you ask me. Exciting is what I said. You have two fantastic grapplers. Uh, Carlo Prater has had a lot of fights. 31st fight, I believe this will be for him. He used to fight in WEC, uh, was regularly in the title picture, but just couldn't seem to jump that final hurdle. He's looking to step back into the ranks of Zufa as he fights Eric Silva. He is a Nogueira trained fighter, trains with Feijiao on the regular, you know, really is a very talented kid. If you ask me, I think Eric Silva is going to be able to pull this out by either decision or a submission. Carlo Prater just doesn't have that extra edge he needs to finish the fight. I couldn't agree more with Nick right now. I think this fight has the potential to compete for fight of the night on this card. Eric Silva, he uh, debuted at uh, Rio, I believe, and... He was very exciting. Anyone named Silva in this game just seems to have that it quality. I don't really know this Carlo Prater fella. His nickname is Neo. It's pretty cool. He looks like a mean mugging dude. I'm going to go ahead and say Eric Silva. Tough war. Three round decision. Now we move on to the third fight of the night. Uh, step up and wait to the UFC middleweight division as we have New Jersey based fighter Mike Masenzio as he takes on the always dangerous foot locking machine Husimar Tequeño Palaharis. This fight is going to be a fight for you more technical fans who enjoy the grappling, as this fight it pits a wrestler, Mike Masenzio, against his direct kryptonite, which is a jiu-jitsu player, and that is Husimar. Genuinely, Hus Husimar wants you to be on top of him, and that's what Mike Masenzio is going to try to do. He's going to take Husimar down with success, I'm sure, and land up on top, and after that, a couple of minutes of, you know, scrambling, I think it's going to be Husimar taking home a limb. Easy submission, first round, and Masenzio is getting out of the UFC again. I don't know who Mike Masenzio is. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to say awesome that he's from Jersey, awesome that he's a wrestler, and I really hope he wins. I don't see it happening. Husmar Palaharis is a scary person, and I would be in fear for my life if I went against him. Same prediction. Palaharis taking off, like, home whatever he wants. And now it's co-main event time. This co-main event is bound to be fireworks. We have a new middleweight addition, and that is Anthony Johnson, who's actually stepping up in weight from the welterweight division. Long overdue, if you ask most MMA fighters. And then you have Vitor Belfort, who is the phenom. My prediction is not a good one for Rio. Vitor Belfort is going down. First round knockout for Anthony Rubble Johnson. I'm positive about that. Take it to the bank. Before you guys go running for the bank with Evan's prediction, I think you should hear what I have to say. If you look in the past, Anthony Johnson has been very one-dimensional. All he is is really a big, powerful guy who can hit you hard. Just because you could lay on top of Dan Hardy for three rounds doesn't make you a good grappler. He is fighting someone who is an Abu Dhabi qualifier more than one year in Vitor Belfort. Vitor Belfort has better submissions, more technical striking, and let's face it, when Josh Koscheck beats you up that bad, you're not beating a former light heavyweight champion. Well, that's a pretty good debate you got there. Forgot that I brought over a real analyst. Um, maybe don't take it to the bank right away. Maybe get an IOU for that. But I'm still going Rumble. First round knockout. 
Main event time, ladies and gentlemen, where we are putting the UFC featherweight championship up for grabs as Jose Aldo looks to derail money Chad Mendes. I think he's gonna. This fight is actually not as exciting and action-packed as it is on paper. This fight is probably one of the easiest picks of the night as Jose Aldo has looked nothing less than unstoppable outside of the two rounds he lost to Mark Hominick. And he's facing Chad Mendes. Chad Mendes trains under Uriah Faber, and Uriah Faber literally got beaten down for five solid rounds by Jose Aldo. I'm going to have to go with a five-round decision for Jose, as Chad Mendes tends to get into decision wars, and he's going to want to test his striking, which is going to be a bad idea. I'm going to have to agree with my new colleague here. I think it was a smart idea to make sure that Jose Aldo was going to defend his title in like spectacular fashion. I think Money Mendes has the ability to really give them a show. I think uh, Jose takes it takes it 100%. Definitely, that's a bank one. Perfect idea to put it after the Vitor one, though, because Vitor is getting smashed. Sorry, Vitor. Well, Evan, since you and I agreed on four out of five fights, let's make that extra fight, you know, the Rumble Johnson fight, the one where he's going to lose. Let's make it a little more interesting. How about the loser has to chug eggnog? All right. I hope you like eggnog, Ben. I know you will. Oh, one more thing. I forgot to mention this, and I think we both agree on this. We're both Gabe Gonzaga fans, and we just want to welcome you back to the UFC. I hope your time outside was better, and I just hope you, you know, come back strong. We want you back, man. All right, guys. Thank you very much for watching, and like us on Facebook. That's Casino MMA with a K. Thank you, guys, and have a great night.